In this lesson, we will be practicing the skill of questioning as we read. Questioning involves us as the reader generating questions before, during and after reading. The first questions a reader might have will be based on the title, the front cover and perhaps the blurb of the story. As we progress through the story, more questions will be generated based on the information we read. When we read, we ask questions so we can clarify meaning and think more deeply about what we're reading. We use it to organise our thoughts and to find specific information in the text. Another reason is so that we can keep our attention to what we're reading. The last reason we ask questions for is because it makes the story much more interesting. Let me give you an example. One of the reasons Star Wars has such dedicated fans is that people find the mysteries fascinating. The audience is given major questions to wonder about sometimes for years at a time between films. When they do get answers, there can be a strong sense of satisfaction. The films will always leave the viewers with more questions to ponder, keeping them engaged and interested. The Harry Potter series constantly presents us with mysteries. The titles usually give us more questions than answers. Before I read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, I wondered, where was this place? Why was it full of secrets? Were they good or bad? The illustrations on the cover of Harry Potter books could be accused of having massive spoilers, but in fact they inspire way more questions than answers. Like, why are Harry and Ron in a flying car? How did they get it? Where are they going? On closer inspection, I saw a steam train at the bottom of the picture. Is that the Hogwarts Express? This tells me that it might be the start of term and that they're probably flying to Hogwarts, but that only leaves more questions. Why are Harry and Ron not on that train? What happened? Is this the start or the end of term? As I read through the story, these questions were answered, but even bigger mysteries emerged. Harry hears a voice that nobody else can before people are attacked, and a message reading, Enemies of the air, beware, is found on the wall. Whose is this voice? Where is it coming from? Why can only Harry hear it? How did no one see the attacker? And who could the heir be? As you can see from the example, to answer these questions, we use the title, the text, the illustrations, just like we did with our predictions. Now, sometimes you're not told everything. Some questions will be left unanswered by the author. That's where good readers can use their own interpretation of the story to come up with their own answers. This is a little bit like visualization in that Maybe the explanation that you come up with will be different to mine, but they are both equally valid. Here's what I'm looking for. I want you to ask questions before, during and after our book, The Stranger. I want you to look for answers by reading on or looking back over the story. The hand sign for this skill is making a W with the fingers on your two hands and we start by saying I wonder. Now remember, pause the video every time you have a question that you want to share with someone in the room. This is a really cool, mysterious book. It doesn't have any definite answers, but it's full of interesting clues if you pay very close attention. Let's begin. The Stranger by Chris Van Allsburg. It was the time of year Farmer Bailey liked best, when summer turned to fall. He whistled as he drove along. A cool breeze blew across his face through the truck's open window. Then it happened. There was a loud thump. Mr. Bailey jammed on his brakes. Oh no, he thought. I've hit a deer. But it wasn't a deer the farmer found lying on the road. It was a man. Mr. Bailey knelt down beside the still figure, fearing the worst. Then suddenly the man opened his eyes. He looked up with terror and jumped to his feet. He tried to run off, lost his balance and fell down. He got up again, but this time the farmer took his arm and helped him to the truck. Mr. Bailey drove home. He helped the stranger inside where Mrs. Bailey made him comfortable on the parlour sofa. Katie, their daughter, peeked into the room. 
The man on the sofa was dressed in odd, rough leather clothing. She heard her father whisper, Must be some kind of hermit, sort of fella who lives alone in the woods. The stranger didn't seem to understand the questions Mr. Bailey asked him. I don't think, whispered Mrs. Bailey, he knows how to talk. Mr. Bailey called the doctor, who came and listened to the stranger's heart, felt his bones, looked in his eyes and took his temperature. He decided that the man had lost his memory. There was a bump on the back of his head. In a few days, the doctor said, he should remember who he is and where he's from. Mrs. Bailey stopped the doctor as he left the house. He'd forgotten his thermometer. Oh, you can throw that out, he answered. It's broken. The mercury is stuck at the bottom. Psst, now is a very good time to ask an adult what a mercury thermometer is, just in case you didn't know. Mr. Bailey lent the stranger some clean clothes. The fellow seemed confused about buttonholes and buttons. In the evening, he joined the Baileys for dinner. The steam that rose from the hot food fascinated him. He watched Katie take a spoonful of soup and blow gently across it. Then he did exactly the same thing. Mrs. Bailey shivered. Rrr, she said, there's a draft in here tonight. The next morning, Katie watched the stranger from her bedroom window. He walked across the yard toward two rabbits. Instead of running into the woods, the rabbits took a hop in his direction. He picked up one of them and stroked its ears, then set it down. The rabbits hopped away, then stopped and looked back, as if they expected the stranger to follow. When Katie's father went into the fields that day, the stranger shyly tagged along. Mr. Bailey gave him a pitchfork, and with a little practice, he learned to use it well. They worked hard. Occasionally, Mr. Bailey would have to stop and rest. But the stranger never tired. He didn't even swear. That evening, Katie sat with the stranger, watching the sun setting. High above them, a flock of geese in perfect V formation flew south on the trip that they made every fall. The stranger could not take his eyes off the birds. He stared at them like a man who'd been hypnotised. Two weeks passed and the stranger still could not remember who he was. But the Baileys didn't mind. They liked having the stranger around. He had become one of the family. Day by day he'd grown less timid. He seems so happy around us, Mr Bailey said to his wife. It's hard to believe he's a hermit. Another week passed. Farmer Bailey could not help noticing how peculiar the weather had been. Not long ago it seemed that autumn was just around the corner. But now it still felt like summer, as if the seasons couldn't change. The warm days made the pumpkins grow larger than ever. The leaves on the trees were as green as they'd been three weeks before. One day the stranger climbed the highest hill on the Bailey farm. He looked to the north and saw a puzzling sight. The trees in the distance were bright red and orange, but the trees to the south, like those round the Baileys, were nothing but shades of green. They seemed so drab and ugly to the stranger. It would be much better, he thought, if all the trees could be red and orange. The stranger's feelings grew stronger the next day. He couldn't look at a tree's leaves without sensing that something was terribly wrong. The more he thought about it, the more upset he became, until finally he could think of nothing else. He ran to a tree and pulled off a leaf. He held it in a trembling hand and, without thinking, blew on it with all his might. At dinner that evening, the stranger appeared dressed in his old leather clothes, by the tears in his eyes, the Baileys could tell that their friend had decided to leave. He hugged them all once, then dashed out the door. The Baileys hurried outside to wave goodbye, but the stranger had disappeared. The air had turned cold, and the leaves on the trees were no longer green. Every autumn since the stranger's visit, the same thing happens at the Baileys' farm. The 
Trees that surround it stay green for a week after the trees to the north have turned. Then, overnight, they change their colours to the brightest of any tree around. And etched in frost on the farmhouse windows are the words that say simply, See you next fall.